Hi, I'm John, the Community Currency Engineer Termel, and this is an article by Kathleen O'Hara called When in Doubt, Create Your Own Money, talking about the local currency system on Salt Spring Island in British Columbia. I might have had a little bit to do with that one. More coming up. When in Doubt, Create Your Own Money, July 9, 2009, by Kathleen O'Hara, a commentary at Telegraph Journal, a newspaper in Canada East. While financial institutions try to polish up their reputations, governments struggle to save their economies, and world leaders debate the future of the U.S. dollar as the international currency standard. One Canadian community is in the pleasant position of being able to say, I told you so. Of course, that wasn't the original intention in 2001, well before the global financial crisis and Barack Obama's new regulatory, quote, rules of the road, unquote. The island of Salt Spring in the southern Gulf Islands off the coast of British Columbia created its own currency based on monetary policies running counter to the mainstream. At that time, no one had even heard of subprime loan. Salt Spring dollars, designed and printed locally, have been unaffected by the turmoil around them. They're issued by the Salt Spring Island Monetary Foundation, the SSIMF, the founders had quite a sense of humor when they gave this registered nonprofit organization its name. It could be more different. It couldn't be more different from its namesake, the IMF or International Monetary Fund, whose reputation has also suffered during this global economic crisis. For one thing, unlike the elitist Washington-based IMF, ordinary local citizens can join and help direct the SSIMF. Its chairman and past president is a mere dentist, not a Harvard-educated economist. Salt Spring dollars are pegged in value to the loonie. End time, they must have a certain number of hours, dollars per hour, and accepted at par at the two national bank branches on the island, the local credit union, Canada Post, and more than 160 local businesses, even a transit system. <clears throat> Good, just like Calgary dollars is accepted by the transit system. According to the SS Dollars website, their role in this community of 10,000 residents is to provide highly secure and functional currency which will help drive island commerce and identify by keeping local dollars local. And yes, SS Dollars are legal. This seems to be one of the main concerns among those who first come across them. We've all been so programmed to fear any kind of counterfeit or bogus currency. However, contrary to popular belief, Governments, communities, and individuals have the right to produce their own money, such as a check, or a bond, or a Canadian tire dollar. In many ways, SS dollars are more physically secure than most money. According to the website, without being too overconfident, Salt Spring dollars are among the most, most secure documents printed anywhere in the world. They have hidden security features that once surpassed, but now have been matched by the Canadian and United States governments. Given the present-day context, when the status quo has proven itself fallible, the concept of communities creating their own currency is an interesting one whose time might have come. In fact, various communities across Canada, the U.S., and the world have moved in this direction, although it appears the Salt Spring dollar has achieved more success integrating into the economy. These 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, 50, and $100 SS dollar bills are more like gift certificates. According to the Canada Revenue Agency, they can be bought directly from the SS IMF, exchanged, or given as change at most commercial outlets. Salt Spring dollars are more secure than the bills we're using, used to dealing with in another way. When created, each new SS bill is backed by an impressive combination of Canadian dollars, silver, gold, held by an investment trust fund. Not time. Too bad. This means there is no problem redeeming SS dollars. Spending them ought to be enough. National currencies used to function in the same solid way, but no longer. At the same time, the trust fund itself stands out because of its policies. As the world recently discovered, financial institutions around the world have been lending money they didn't actually have. It's called leveraging. In many cases, banks have lent amounts of money which were several times what they had in reserve. This was in part because countries like Canada no longer have a reserve requirement. 
Further good news from Salt Spring is that returns on the trust fund's investments are used to invest on the island rather than filling the coffers of rich executives. The Sparta effect. Put all your money in the bank, take their chips, use their chips, and the community benefits of the interest of the money in the bank. The Sparta effect. Although highly relevant to today's crisis, the subprime scandal that precipitated it is the fact that these SSIMF loans are often interest-free, especially for organic and natural growers. This, quote, no usury, unquote, policy is, quote, fundamental to the concept of true community currency, unquote. Yes, it is. Banks and other IMF, uh, and the other IMF must shudder when they hear that such an alternative policy exists because no usury runs so counter to the entire structure underlining our societies and global capitalism. For any communities wanting to follow Salt Springs' lead and extricate themselves as much as possible from the prevailing system, SS dollar supporters admit that it's a pretty complicated to set up this process. I know, setting up poker chips is just so hard. After establishing the SSIMF, Raising funds, designing and printing the bills, they then had to convince skeptical financial institutions and businesses. Well, with proof of all these working systems, it ought to be easier by now. Even so, we're very big fans of local currency and encourage other communities to create their own. Perhaps this is the future calling, one that is more local, secure, efficient, and fair. Kathleen O'Hara is a Canadian journalist who writes for the Issues Network, and this was published at the telegraphjournal.canadaeast.com slash opinion slash article slash 723-536. Now, why this is so interesting is back in 1993, when I founded my abolitionist party and ran for prime minister, they had a show on a much music channel called Talk Me to Your Leader, and they had the leaders of all Canada's political parties who were candidates for prime minister on, on a different show to be interviewed by a Canadian musical icon. Well, my Canadian musical icon was Randy Bachman from the Guess Who and the Bachman Turner Overdrive, you know, taking care of business. So, um, and we'd been sent them 30 pages of information on how Let's's were working around the world. So our interview really went well that night. And I was glad to see years later Randy on TV pulling out some of his Salt Spring dollars and mentioning how they were running their own community currency in Salt Spring. So I'm happy to think that that endeavor, that attempt to spread the word, did manage to get through to Randy Bachman, who did something with it. Congratulations, Randy. You've done something to save your community.